Our previous session focused on mindfulness of the body. Today, in our second practice session, we'll turn our open, loving attention to our emotions, another fascinating realm of experience. In the English language, we have countless words for emotions. Read a good novel and you'll see quite a rich selection of them. But when you explore your own inner universe, you will discover that there is a much shorter list of core or raw emotions. Some years ago, there was a film, an animated movie called Inside Out, that dramatized five uh, different emotions, joy, sadness, anger, fear, and disgust. But there are other categorizations. One of them that's used often has six basic or core emotions, playfulness, seeking, and caring being the positive ones, fear, anger, and sadness being the more difficult ones. Sometimes we accuse other people of being toxic or radioactive in the ways that they express the emotions that wind up impacting us in negative ways. Well, that turns out to be a pretty good analogy, a useful description of emotions generally. Different radioactive substances have different half-lives, lengths of time by which half of the material has expended its radioactivity. Emotions are quite a bit like that. When I get angry, I radiate it intensely at first, and then over a period of time, this, as the sine curve of change goes on, the intensity diminishes all the way down to its half-life, and then it tails down and away. Mindfulness of anger does not make anger disappear, but there is sound science to suggest that mindfulness shortens its half-life, makes it a steeper and shorter curve. As we discussed in the introductory video, the aim of mindfulness is to observe our experiences lovingly and with an open heart and mind, not to change them. But when we observe them openly and kindly, our relationship to them very often changes, and that may in turn change the experience itself. And this is very often the case when we're mindful of our emotions. Now the prospect of shortening the half-life of our anger has got to be attractive to all of us, right? But you might ask, why would we want to shorten the half-life of joy? Well, so that we can have yet more time to enjoy yet more enjoyable experiences. Just opens us up to more experience that we can find pleasure in. So let's get right down to it. We're going to take time now to be mindful of our emotions. And that takes us right back to where we started last time, in our bodies. Again, we begin with a body scan from toes all the way up. And when you get to an area of your body in which you associate an emotion, take time to attend to that emotion. What is its most basic nature? Which of the five or six core emotions is it? How does it manifest in the body? Does it manifest in more than one area of the body? In particular, emotions of all kinds are very often reflected in the ways that we breathe. Watch your breath to see if emotions are, of any kind are showing up in the sensations and the patterns there. Again, don't try to change or fix anything. Just watch your breath and see what emotions are connected to it. Give it high resolution, highly pixelated attention. At some point, having made an initial naming of the emotion, that's one of those six core emotions, or five, uh, you may just wind up letting go of that definition, just sitting with the raw experience of it. Observe it on its own terms. Watch this experience. And if it has a flow of change, if it shifts or evaporates, observe that flow. 
If it dissipates away, then move farther up in the body scan until you notice another manifestation of emotion in the tension, relaxation, or other experience of an area of your body. <clears throat> Again, get into a comfortable position in which you'll stay alert and give yourself enough sensory deprivation to encourage concentration. Set your alarm for 15 minutes. Put this video on pause and let us begin. What did you experience? What did you observe? What did you discover in that practice? Here's a useful mnemonic that we can use for um, describing mindfulness practice. Rain, just like falling out of the sky. Recognize, accept, investigate, and non-identify. Now, Non-identifying in relation to emotions means moving from I am sad to I feel sadness. How long does it take for you to move from sensing an emotion to being able to observe it in a conscious way, thus separating the experience from your core identity, your sense of self? For example, you become conscious that you're anxious. In that moment, can you look back and recall when the moment of anxiety actually began and how that anxiety is manifested in the body? Very often there's a, there's a gap between the onset of an emotion and our full consciousness of it. It's this time gap that often brings us suffering and confusion. One of the fruits of mindfulness practice is shortening this time gap giving us much more control over the way that we respond to our emotions. One common emotion is a manifestation of fear that we call FOMO, F-O-M-O, fear of missing out, fear that something is happening that we need to be part of right now. And it leads to a powerful sensation of urgency to do something, take an action, or solve a problem. A very common urge is to reach for your mobile phone and check your messages, right? I have that urge all the time. Well, when that urge arises, before grabbing your phone, observe the urge. Where do you feel that urge? I feel it very often in my arm and my hand before I reach for it. I feel the urge physically there. Try out something a practice called urge surfing. Stand up on the urge like it's a surfboard and ride it out. Ride it all the way into the shore. Delay acting on the urge long enough to fully experience and observe it. Watch it carefully as you ride it out. Where and how long does this urge manifest in the body? What raw emotions, what raw physical sensations go with it? What's it like? Very often, just by surfing out the urge before acting on it, this urge plays out like a spent wave that then slops onto the beach. And your sense of urgency, your experience of FOMO, might very well melt away on its own. A meditation teacher once was talking with someone who said he was depressed. The teacher asked him, so you're aware that you're depressed? Yes, he said. And then the teacher asked him, is your awareness depressed? Now that's a crucial question. If a person's awareness itself is depressed, that would be a matter for a different kind of intervention than would be called for in the case of merely experiencing sadness. Mindfulness is refraining from identifying the core of our being with our experiences in order for us to be able to more fully observe and see our experiences. 
and see them as they are on their own terms. So we recognize our emotions, we see them as they are, and accept them as they are without clinging to our opinions about them. If we can do that, we can investigate them closely and lovingly, and then we also refrain from letting them identify and define who we are. So that's our assignment until the next session, 15 to 20 minutes daily of attending to our emotions, starting with the body scan. Till then, be well.